So this is a CRT TV. And, well, yeah, I bet have you heard of it. It's probably the old one in your grandma's room, or in, if you have seen it, going to your aunt's or really old uncle's house. They probably have one of these. On the right is a CRT, too. Except it's an older version of a CRT. Have you ever wondered why they work? And also, why are there black lines whenever you turn on a CRT TV? And also, why did why did we also always why did we switch to CRTs to LED TVs? Why? Why did we switch to LED TVs when CRT TVs were always good? Well, I will be explaining all that in this video. So first, let's go right over the basics. This is the world's first TV. As a matter of fact, it was very simple. It was the world's first television station. These started appearing in America in the late 1920s. As a matter of fact, this was just the prototype. And also, also in the rural places of America, it started appearing in the 30s. And as a matter of fact, this TV is the first mechanical TV station. This wasn't just a TV. It was a big as, as big as, let's put it into comparison. It's as big as 10 gaming PCs. That's right. That's how big a TV station is. It's as big as 10 big fat gaming PCs which you get for the big cases and stuff. That's the right comparison. That's how I say it. So yes, how did it work? Well, this was called the W3XK, which I don't know why they called it that. But if I were to call it, I would name it after myself, Sanjay. Okay, it was also created by Charles Francis Jenkins. He was on only one of the inventors of the mechanical television. There were others, but there were less popular ones, and he was the main person who worked on the TV. And also, he's the most popular person, since the other ones didn't really get, didn't want the media scouring over them. So yes, since when people get popular. There's, the media starts scouring over them, and the other one, people wanted to remain anonymous. This TV had the first broadcast on July 2, 1928. It was invented in September 7, 1927. Also, it was also demonstrated in San Francisco. That's right. This TV was demonstrated in San Francisco. There was also another TV. This one was actually the real creator, but the problem was that its quality, yes, it was more like a, it was more like a torch. For example, the resolution of this is 10 pixels. That's right. It had the world's worst resolution. It was more like 10 lights stacked together. So it wasn't really even called a TV. But he was the real inventor though, but it wasn't even a TV. It was more like a bunch of lines, of black lines. There weren't even that much black lines. The resolution of it was so low that you couldn't even see the picture properly. So he wasn't the real inventor, but let's just say he was. He was the one who originated, who actually made the TV. And he was a, tw as a matter of fact, he was 21 years old. His name was Philo Taylor Farnsworth. He had lived in a house without electricity until he was 14. So yes, as a matter of fact, the world's first TV show is called The Queen's Messenger. It aired in September 11, 1928. The 40-minute long program was the first drama to ever be broadcasted on television. Thanks to WGY's television, General Electric's and its experimental station. It was made in Shenetti, Katadi, and New York. So yes, let's just take a brief look at how it works. On the right is, well, the TV itself. It doesn't really look like a TV, but this is what they call a TV back then. There in the middle, we have, well, I don't even know what that is, but it looks like there was a wheel and there was some magnetic energy which is powered to it, so I don't really know. But this was the TV the 20 the 21 year old made, and this was the and this was the So this was the TV, the original TV, which was the 
a b better one since it had more way more accessibility and it didn't break down every 10 seconds and also had a better resolution about two times better instead of 10 bright lights it had 20 that's how bad the television pixel was so yes this was this original one which was perfected into that one so yes this is how it works there's like usually a cathode an electron beam an anode and deflection coils and also the phosphor screen which i will be telling you it is defined as a negatively charged electrode by which electrons enter a de electrode device the cathode is an electrode form which conventional current leaves and a polarized a polarized electric device in well if you didn't know what that means it's basically a transmitter for electrons it's basically a way for a machine kind of like a train for electrons to get around that was basically it it's basically a train which took the electrons and spit in them out spit them out what's and next there's the anode an anode is used to accelerate the electrons towards the train and also collect the secondary electrons that are emitted by the phosphor particles in the vacuum of the crt what this basically means is that the anode is basically once you get on the train and comes to a stop then you get on a bus to go to your destination or you can go in a car which is let's just say is faster to get you to your destination what this does is that basically takes the electrons and makes them go faster kind of like when a train is slowly gaining speed and then suddenly it goes super fast kind of like so it slowly gains speed so that's what it does it basically shoots the electrons onto your tv screen well in this case that's the phosphor screen which is basically the phosphor screen emits photons if the accelerated electrons hit the material the most common use of phosphor screens are the cathode ray tubes which are used in early tvs like this the phosphor screen mainly converts the elect accelerated electrons into photons basically what this does is that it takes all this light and converts into photons what that means is is that it basically makes it visible to the human eye since electrons have a negative charge we cannot really see them without a special device so basically it just converts them into photons or basically how basically light so we can see it on the screen so yes then there is the deflection coil which basically is the electron gun which is basically the way of the order for example let's say um if you've been to a baseball stadium, there, there's there basically, let's just say there are some people who want to promote something. And basically, all these people have di a different color of shirt. And when you look at them from far away, you see a picture. That's basically it. If they're not arranged correctly, you won't see anything. But if they're arranged in the right order, you'll see them properly, for example. So in summary, it basically puts them all together. And then there's the electron beam, which is basically in the middle. It's basically, it, there's three colors. So this is basically it. This is how it works. So first, you get it, the signals from your antenna, which comes from a different place, which was at least in the olden days. So yes, you get it from your antenna, and then, it, and then there's the signal, which goes through all this stuff I just told you, and then it goes through and it gets converted the electrons get converted into photons into three different colors red green and blue then there's this thing which converts it into photons so we can see it so the color tv receiver has a decoding circuit which is basically the cpu or the cpu it's not really a cpu it's basically a decoder that's the decoder. The black thing here is the decoder. And it turns incoming signals into red, green, and blue signals. So this is how it looks in close-up. Or this is a digitally rendered image. This is how it mostly looks. But in other TVs or the late 90s CRT TVs, they had an extra color, which was yellow. 
with a more vibrant color, but that was, this is the 80s TVs or up to 80 CRT TVs. So yes, what happens is that a color is generated. For example, let's say you cannot just put it doesn't what happens is that there's a red and then there's green and then there's blue. There's let's say you want that red thing over there. The red color gets activated and then the red color will go and shine there to create half one half of the image. And then when the blue color is needed, it would use that. And then when the green is needed, we'll use that. But hey, there's a brown color here. How do we fix that? Well, if we mix start, if we mix green and blue together, you can with this right amount, you can get this color. And also, why do CRT TVs flicker? It's because the it's because the image is drawn one at a time. That's right. It's not it's not like the set as LEDs like we have right now, which don't just have one frame all together. CRTs make up many frames. So as a matter of fact, every like milli milli centi millisecond as only a per certain part of the screen is made or rendered or pictured. But hey, if if only one part of the image is happening at a time, why do our eyes see the full picture? Well, the explanation to that is that CRT TVs do this process so fast that we can only see one picture at a time since our eyes cannot register every single thing and our eyes are not fast enough to see every single thing since this these CRT TVs get up to 512 512 times as many pixels as they are on the screen so happens 512 times times the amount of pixels which is let's just say there's 480 pixels which is up to like 10,000 times per second and our, our eyes cannot see 10,000 frames or pixels per second so basically our eye just condenses that image into one big frame so yes this is just another process on the top is well basically the gun or also known as the gun and this is what happens is that this is the thing which controls these these tubes or the beam to go into every single spot. So yes. Why did we switch? Well, mostly because of comfortability, how big CRTs can get, and well, mainly new technology. One of the thing problems are, are that CRTs consume so much energy compared to LEDs. Second of all, you cannot make big flat screen TVs with CRTs since CRTs have to have a big, like, cone behind the TV. So let's say your TV is 55 inches. You would need a cone so big that it would basically be super, super, extremely big. Like, it would probably be the size of five gaming PCs stacked together like this. So yes, mostly because you cannot, cannot get that big with CRTs. Since if, you, if the screen is too big, our eyes will not be able to see the whole picture since the CRTs won't be able fast enough to put every single pixel on the screen. So they have to be slow. So we can only have a little bit the size of the CRT TVs small so we can see every single dot on the screen. Second of all, CRTs cannot have that much high resolution since TVs nowadays are up to 4K, 8K, and 16K, which are supposed to be launching 16k in 2022 but we are have 8k tvs and mainly they're just bad because they keep flickering they don't have good fps and mainly because since if you want such a big tv with the crt the crt has to be so big It'll be like the size of a room that's how big the tv will be and where we'll use it in your closet well that's why we use led plasmas which are 2010s we use plasmas and now we use leds and qleds which is basically an enhanced version of leds that's basically what qleds so yes that is why and what crts are why did we move on to leds from crts and basically the overview it bye